What is going on everyone? Let's talk about my home state, Oregon. Oregon used to be a place most people only knew from that game, The Oregon Trail. I knew a few people that actually thought it wasn't a real place. They thought it was a fake place created for the game. Well, in case any of you still doubt its existence, I can assure you, it's here. I'm actually sitting in it right now. Oregon over the last few decades has seen a couple migrations that have changed Oregon for the worst, most people think. But for some reason, people keep coming. Maybe you're thinking about it right now. But before you start playing the Oregon Trail for real, you should watch my top 10 reasons not to move to Oregon. Number 10. Portland's really not Oregon. Portland is Oregon's largest city, and it might as well be from another country they're so different. Hell, maybe even another universe. An elderly gentleman in Lincoln City once told me Oregon would be a Republican voting state if it wasn't for you Nancys in Portland. Now, if you look at the voting records, you'd see he's kind of right. Other than Portland, Eugene and Salem tend to vote Democrat. The rest of the state is hardcore Republican. So before you start thinking the whole state's liberal, think again. And before all you haters start typing, there's nothing wrong with being a Democrat or liberal, just like there's nothing wrong with being a conservative or a Republican or anything else you want to label someone. We're all human beings wanting the best for our country and ourselves. Number nine, the rain. Now I'm sure you've heard all the stories about the rain in Portland. If you're from the northern part of the country, you'd see it as no big deal. But if you're from places like California, Arizona, Texas, Nevada, or New Mexico, you'll probably see more rain your first February here than you saw in three years in one of your southwestern states. And before anyone cherry picks some stat about Houston or something like that, how much rain they got, okay, congratulations, you found a stat that proves me wrong for a small portion of one of the states. Stop typing. Number eight. Internet Oregonians hate you. Oregonians, for the most part, are kind of tired of the whole migration thing. Most really don't say anything, but it does bother them. Maybe a snide remark or a little joke here or there, not a big deal. The real angry Oregonians are the people below in the comment section of this video. Actually, if you look at any video I made, you'll see the same thing. Doesn't matter what state, town, city, they all think that where they live is the only place anyone's moving to, and they'll tell you not to move there because you're ruining it for them. It's just life. When I was growing up in LA, half the girls I met on the beach were from Oregon. They came down to Los Angeles, California to either make it big in Hollywood, or they always wanted to live in California, something like that. My brother actually married one, and subsequently moved up here to Oregon. Number seven. Outdoor pressure. When you move to Oregon, people pressure you to do things outside. For a lot of the millennials, this presents a serious problem. You see, when you get to the outdoors, you go hike in some place, sometimes you're not in connection with the internet or your Instagram account, and that scares the hell out of a lot of millennials. Number six, housing costs. Because of the Oregon migrations, rent and home prices have seen serious jumps in the last couple of years. The latest population boom has been of tech workers, as opposed to the last few, which were college kids and artists. Tech workers have money, and college kids and artists don't. This has driven housing costs up. Way up. It's slowly going down that same road that San Francisco and, you know, Silicon Valley went down over the last decade or so. If you're thinking about moving to the Beaver State to buy a house, do your research and move to one of the Dakotas. Number five, it's hard to make a living in Oregon. Low wages and the state's cost of living index, which is nearly 30% above the national average right now, make it hard to live in this state. The average income is only about $47,000. And, you know, that's not bad if you're in Kansas or North Dakota, but here in Oregon, it's not good. In addition, Oregon has one of the highest rates of workplace safety incidents in the nation. So chances are that load of bricks that fell on your foot at work, well, the job probably wasn't even worth it before the brick incident. Number four, too much weed. Now, a lot of you just said that's impossible. It's like saying too much Christmas, but it's true. In 2017, Oregon grew more weed than they consumed. The demand is there for legalized weed. It's just too many people got into the growing game. On top of that, since the legalization, more and more people are growing their own in their garage or their balcony, like a friend of mine. Number three, the illegal drugs. Meth and opiates are always on the bad decision menu here in Oregon. Whether it's under some bridge in Portland or a trailer park in Grants Pass, it's a problem statewide. I guess no matter what you do, stupidity always finds a way. If you do move here to Oregon, check the local news on Google and stay away from any place that has a ton of drug arrests. They always have other issues that go along with those drugs. Just stay away from those areas. 
Number two, tree hugging is real. Let's say you buy a house and you have a tree blocking your view from, well, more trees. We have a lot of them here in Oregon. And we don't like to see any of them hurt. Sometimes, it seems like Oregon protects the trees more than it protects its people. You just can't go out and start chopping down trees in Oregon if you don't like them. In most places, that includes your own property. Keep all this in mind if you buy a house in Oregon and you want to do some improvements. If there's a tree there, you may have to get permits and maybe even go into court. I know my old neighbor did. She had to go to court to remove a tree from her house. She had to prove it was lifting her foundation to actually get the okay to remove the tree. And number one, the party's over. Oregon prior to the 1990s was for the most part just Oregonians. It was rural folk, small town folk, and people from a couple medium cities. And like I said, it was mostly Oregonians with a sprinkling of newbies. Their population actually went down in the mid-1980s, and for a state that loves its nature, those were the good old days. In the early 1990s, that all changed. It was a cheap place to live, and Oregon suddenly was cool. So people started heading to Oregon. Mostly it was young people either in college or recently graduated, musicians, teenagers chasing a dream, whatever. But since about 2008, when the economy crashed, it got bad. More and more families and people looking for work showed up in Oregon. The Oregon Trail started showing signs of stress and despair. And here we are 10 years later, and the dream's over. Now, I love Oregon, and I'll never leave. But if I was thinking about it now, and to all you that are still considering Oregon, don't. It's over. I hear Billings, Montana is nice. All right, so that's my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You know, in all reality, Oregon is a great state. It still is. It's just not what it was 10 years ago. There was a dream about Oregon, and it is kind of over. It's starting to be just another state. Very good state, but just another state. Anyway, I hope you guys liked the video, like I said. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Check out the links below. Get a t-shirt. All that good stuff. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.